It was good. It's your boy, Mr. Monk is 7. I wanted to... I felt a little nostalgic for like the 2014 times. When I would make like five videos every day. Bedridden and shit like that. So I'm thinking, you know, I'm gonna make a weird ass video. The way I used to. The way it ought to be. So I'm going to make... A review of three WrestleMania 31 reviews. I told everyone I wasn't going to watch it respectfully, not because I thought it was going to suck, just because I'm not going to invest into four hours for something I might not like. I knew I was going to like WrestleMania 30, not so much 31. But I did invest even more time than I would have actually watching a pay per view, watching the reviews, watching people's analysis, which that's so me. That is so me. But anyway, let's let's start off with the first one I saw. I saw a review of WrestleMania 31 from Deluxe Man, alongside his usual pay-per-view review sidekick, Blue Chaos 26, the casual reviewer. And I gotta say, this was actually. My favorite one because it kind of follows the usual pattern and it wasn't too long. Like, let me go to Deluxe Man's channel to see how long this video was. This was actually relatively concise for a review of a four hour pay per view where you're talking about it match to match. And then again, WrestleMania only had like nine matches. Seven were actually on the main card. Two were on the pre-show. So it was 32 minutes. 32 minutes, that is actually really good. Saw the review. I like the chemistry between Blue Chaos 26 and the Lex Man. Both those motherfuckers is... But what I like about Blue Chaos is that he actually seems like he's the good boy. Like, he's the guy that goes to church, he does a football thing, and all this other stuff. Like, he's he's a good boy, and the Lex Man is kind of like the hyperactive nerd. I kind of like the chemistry between the two of them. I don't know how the character, I don't know how Blue Chaos is like, um, outside of these YouTube videos. I know a little bit about the Lex Man because I like him on Facebook and he's always on there talking about some wrestling related stuff so I kind of understand his personality a bit. And yeah, I really like this one. This was my favorite. I also saw Schlag Daddy's from OTRS Central, his review of WrestleMania 31. I like the this one was the most unique out of the three I'm talking about because Slag Daddy actually talks about the production and things besides the matches themselves. He really analyzes the show holistically and he even made it explicitly. He explicated the point that a lot of people talk about how being ring action isn't everything but when it comes to reviews that's all their analysis really is and it got me thinking about like my vlog reviews like I'll be talking about music the gameplay the story on all those like step-by-step -step aspects as if I'm speaking game facts style but I could be going about things other ways I could think outside the box and that's exactly what he did for 59 minutes that said, these 59 minutes actually went through pretty well. One criticism, though, is that Schlechte speaks the way normies on Facebook type when they get into like an argument on the internet. You know, they'll emphasize and capitalize random words as if that gets a point across, across and they'll rant like aggressively and like a high-pitched weaselly prog voice and that's kinda what Schlag Daddy does but 
you know, uh, he's gotten a bit more one-dimensional on it. But there was a point when he was kind of, when OTRS was different from everything else, it was like a group of friends and shit. He was kind of like the regular dude. He was the guy that was able to get his points across. He was articulate. He was cool. He was the bro tier leader, the alpha male. And all of that, that word triggers people so much now. You know, he was that in his group. Now he's kind of like this weaselly ass guy when he gets mad. He even has the underdog shirt like every other video. I don't know if I'm in love with that gradual change in his persona. Because what kind of got me into OTRS off the rope show was that he had like Matt and a couple of other guys. And. Between all of them, he was like the most analytical, rational guy. Here, he's so kind of analytical and rational, but he almost speaks as if he's speaking in buzzwords and talking points. And he's speaking like a journalist, a modern day journalist. No ethics and integrity. That said, this was actually really good. I love this video. I love his commentary. I love his analysis. Don't get it twisted. Oh, this stuff ain't easy. It ain't. I mean, pimping ain't easy. Vlogging ain't easy. Some people, maybe it comes naturally. But I doubt that. Anyways. Third person. I saw the Spoony One's like, three-part review. And I love the Spoony One. I love his wrestling reviews. And I think that Spoonie more than anyone else, when I hear his analysis, his style of thinking is very similar to mine. And that comes with the advantages. I can really relate to how he's thinking. It can really relate to his analysis. He really, he pictures and considers things a lot of people don't. But it takes forever. This shit, this was like a, Part one was one minute and twenty seven. No, one hour and twenty seven minutes. Part two was fifty seven minutes. Part three was also fifty seven minutes. Put it together, that was three hours and twenty one minutes of him. Not approximately, but just him ratting his head off with his girlfriend, who actually did a pretty good job. His girlfriend's name is April and shit. She was. Yeah, they had some like nice ass chemistry. Like she had her analysis. They agreed on some things. They had two different like ways of looking at things that ultimately really worked out. It was kind of like it was kind of like the Lex Man Blue Chaos. They would disagree on things, but really they're just agreeing, just looking at it in two different ways. Same opinion, just two ways of looking at it, and. Really, two directions. That was the case here. I like the chemistry. Now, I'm gonna be honest. I like Miles, his younger bro. When they do these reviews together, but that shit can be a little dull. And Miles, it seems like compared to Spoonie, he seems like the good one. He's he's a cop. I know, like I don't really like cops, but he's a cop. He's got a job. He's getting his stuff together, and Spoonie's like the reviewer on the internet. He's got long hair. He's got the nerdy, weaselly voice, and Miles is a little more. And Miles seems a little geeky himself, but he seems a little more of the normal one compared to the two. And I like that dynamic, but it's not always as interesting as it would look on paper. Whereas this one, it really worked well. This duo, this pairing. And still should have been like, I'd say at least half the size on all three parts. Because I saw all of it. I saw all of it and I felt drained. But you probably shouldn't watch it all in one sitting. I mean, I'm a neat, but even this is like pushing it for me. 
but still, I love his analysis. I love that we kind of think exactly the same way. And it was my least favorite of three. But it was actually pretty good. I loved all these reviews of pay-per-view. I never actually bothered to see and probably never will. Because I ain't planning on getting the network again. Unless they do like another free thing. But I didn't even see Fastlane. And they were giving out Fastlane for free too. So it's more of a time preference than a money preference thing. Anyway, it's your boy Mr. Wonka7 back again with another vlog classic. I should do some more of these review reviews. Just... Just because it sounds completely stupid and it's so me. Anyway, suck my dick.